Welcome to this week's SV Links video. Well, this is New Year's week, so Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. So we ended 2023 going backwards a little bit, but we don't want to belabor that point too much. We are going to move forward in 2024. Right. So to get going this week, we're going to go ahead and go over to the lot and get some work done, both a little bit on the boat and also uh, some changing over of our storage methods uh, from our shipping containers over to trailers and such. So we've got a lot of work to go on that, and we've got a lot of work to go on the boat. So we're going to get to all of that this week. Plus, at the end of this video, even though we kind of did a recap of 2023 in uh, this video, uh, which you can also get down in the description. Uh, we're, so we're not going to recap 2023 again. It's, we're moving on to 2024 here. But we do want to just do a brief thing on how many hours we spent in 2023 working on the boat. And that'll tie into my estimates of where we are that we also talked about in that video. So we'll do that at the end of the video. So uh, stick around for that. And then just one more note for our special uh, crew patron level and above. There is a new exclusive video, this one, which... Uh, is up and available for watching and we're looking for some help on a, a subject there to do with uh our uh boat mattresses anyway uh so let's get on over to the lot and uh then we'll show you what we're doing there and then we'll get back here and do a little bit of that chat about uh where we're at on uh ours and and the boat and so off we go off we go The rains are over, so it's time for us to get back to work finally. We've got our tunnel tent behind us, down. Brian's opening up the soon-to-be leaving shipping containers. That's what all that noise is. Anyway, um, today uh, we're going to uncover the port hull and try to get that epoxy finished on that one so that about two days from now when it's uh, set up, because it's very cool, we need to give it at least a couple days to set up. So once it's set up, we will uh, sand it. And later that week, if all goes well, uh, we will put the barrier coat on that one. And so once the barrier coat's on both of these, we can move on to putting the copper coat on. Uh, there's normally in our schedule what we would have then done is flip these over, rotated them, and got to those bulkheads. But we got to move that shipping container out of here now due to the uh, city regulations that uh, they're forcing us to. And uh, we're going to replace that with a uh, toy box trailer so that we uh, will take that out and put the trailer in and move our stuff into the trailer. But uh, that may delay us a little bit here because we really need to move the shipping container the same day that we take the hulls to flip around. I don't want to make those two different days of moving these, these hulls. And we need to get this hull out of the way to get that out. So uh, we'll see which day we actually flip these over. It all depends on when we get this sold, uh, hopefully soon. We're really trying hard to make this last uh, epoxy run, the last epoxy run on here. It's very nice, but there's still just a couple spots where it dips a little bit of exposed. Uh, we're just getting through the fairing compound. There's just enough little tiny stuff that we really need to do one final run on this. And we did the same thing on the other one at this stage and it worked out great. So we're gonna do one more epoxy run on this right now. Pretty much the whole hull, both sides. It's a very thin layer, so it shouldn't choose a lot of epoxy, but there's just places where it still needs a little bit more. And uh, I'd love to put this uh, porthole to rest, like the starboard one, and uh, that's the goal for this week. And again, by the end of uh, you know six, seven days from now, I'd like to be getting the bottom paint on here, but it wouldn't be ready today. We're gonna wipe this down and go to town on it.
We were here early this morning, uh, but the morning dew uh, was uh, on the hull, so we really couldn't sand or epoxy. So we wiped it all down with dry towels, and then we left for a few hours and let it uh, completely dry now. And so now we can get to work on this. And now this side is the one we did <coughs> with our next epoxy layer already, but you can see how white this is because I put a thicker layer on here now. But if you look at the other side, you can see how splotchy and yellowed uh, this is. It looks a lot worse than it is. Uh, this is very nicely smooth. It's very, very nice. Uh, so it's not really that hard. It's nicer than the other side was. So it doesn't going to take a lot. The real reason that we're going to have to put more on here, though, is just that there's still some spots that were pretty close to the basalt here. And so we're going to put a thin layer on the whole thing. But it should go a little easier because this one is a lot smoother than that side was. Well, we started sanding, but it turns out that this is not quite cured enough to sand. It's almost there, but uh, it's just a little bit too rubbery still, and it gums up the sandpaper. So we can't sand this, and because we can't sand this, we can't really put on epoxy on the other side because there's a little sanding we have to do at the top here. So uh, plan B, today, while we let this set up a little bit more, for a day or so, uh, we're gonna do some other rearranging. Now remember that we're going to hook these holes around the other direction, so the bows are gonna be down there and the stern's gonna be over here. That means that the forebeam is down there, and currently the forebeam is in our way over here because now we have to take that shipping container out through here. So all this stuff, including that four beam, have to be moved. So since we want the four beam down where the bow is anyway, we're gonna, and we have some time today because of the curing, we're gonna go ahead and move the four beam all the way down the other end of the lot up against the fence there so that it's ready to go right onto the boat there and it's out of our way. We got that beastly uh, carbon fiber four beam sitting there on that little wagon. Now we're gonna move the forms that hold it temporarily. Those are the forms we made it on, but they're trash eventually. But they're good for holding it while uh, it's sitting here waiting for us to get these holes flipped around and bulkheads across so we can put this in. So we're gonna put the forms down there now. Now we need the stand that those go on. We gotta make sure there's enough space when we flip the boat around for the bow to not hit that beam because it's gonna be in the way until we put it on the boat. So we gotta measure that. Now the reason we're offsetting this this way has to do with that the fence isn't straight here. This fence along the back is tilted funny. It's tilted this way. And so this form, if we bring it down there, would be only this far from the bow of the boat once we flip this around. But the back has this much space. So we shifted it down there so that we can walk around the bow of this boat here without getting into this. So it's a method to our madness or something like that. We're also making sure, because this uh, forebeam is in a teardrop shape, and so we're making sure that the skinny part of the teardrop is here. That way, I don't have to turn this thing around when the boat's here. It just goes up and onto the boat. So that'll be hard enough, uh, but uh, we don't want to have to reverse it as well. So I'm making sure it's the right orientation right now. We gave up. It's too heavy uh, for two of us. So what we're going to do is we have to bring the bobcat in here to, to rotate and flip these canoes over. So we're just going to let it sit here for now. It's fine. And uh, we'll pick it up with the forklift and stick it in there another day. So I sold the first green shipping container over there. So that's going to get hauled out of here maybe tomorrow. And that means we have to empty it of all that, uh, all those parts in there. So what we're doing is we're arranging a couple tables over in this corner here. 
that we can put all that on temporarily uh, and cover it uh, in case there's going to be any rain because we can't do anything with them until we get the bigger container out. Because over here, we have our 40 foot, and I have somebody interested in that, although it's not sold yet. And to get that one out is the real problem. The green one comes straight out, but for that one, we gotta move this hole over. We gotta angle this thing over some, and then we've gotta pull it straight out. And that's where our new toy box trailer that's gonna hold all these little parts that we're gonna take out get loaded into. But I've got to get them out of the green one so they can get out of here. Then I've got to sell the orange one, move the boat and get that out of here before we can put the trailer on there and put all the parts into it. So these parts are going to have to sit out on these tables for a week or two. So um, that's what we're doing today. And uh, the Admiral's going to come over and help us load, uh, unload all of these parts onto these tables. But we needed a big flat surface that we can put them on and cover them. So that's what we're up to. These two tables here are going to end up with our little pieces in stacks on here. And then over here, uh, we're going to use these three to hold these panels over here and lean them against them because we need them not be leaning against that green one so we can have that pulled out. So that's what we're up to right now. right now is the temporary bulkheads. These go in to help us uh, put the decks and such on and get the form shape and then they come back out again. That's why they're MDF. This, as you can see, says C, P2. This is the dining room table, but we decided that this is too small, so we expanded the table larger and we're building our own instead of using this piece. So this is a good piece of scrap that we can use for other things. Well, as you can see, we're getting a lot of these out. Uh, we're trying to keep them stacked in their same stack so that when we move them into the new uh, toy trailer, we don't have to resort them. So each of these stacks is one area of the boat. There are over 600 pieces that we have to get out of there and we probably have 550 of them. So uh, we're nearly there and uh, we just gotta let us load a few more. Which is that one? Flip it over. Oh, yeah, that goes right where you have it. Perfect. All right, we're down to the last couple little pieces. We're doing the off cuts underneath over there. Off cuts are things that are actually parts of the boat, so they don't have any label on them and we can use them for whatever else we want to build in the boat later and there are quite a few things like how we're redoing the stairs differently than the plan has them so we need to recut those so we'll use some off cuts for that uh, some work on the uh, sugar scoop area i want to add a little bit better um, step on the back there so we're going to need to cut that out of off cuts we're thinking about adding a um, single bunk forward over the double bunk and so we need some big off cuts for that. So anyway, there's a lot of uses for those, so we want to make sure we don't uh, ruin those either. So now that we've got them all out of the container, we're going to have to get some nice plastic coverings over all this uh, to protect it while we wait to get the shipping containers out and the new trailer in, and then we'll move all this back into the new trailer. Oh, so it's back to work again. Um, good old porthole and uh, 
this round of uh, this seems to be the last. As you can see, we where we were going through uh, to the nearly to the basalt there. Now we've got a layer over the top, and uh, looks good. So uh, work our way down, and then we'll get to the other side. Okay, so we're back from the lot working on the boat and getting our storage trailers uh, situated. Uh, so now we let's take a little bit of a look at our 2023 hours and how we did. Right, because um, I kind of want to take a look at where our estimate is of where we're at based on what we've accomplished, which I, uh, in this uh, recent video, mentioned that I think we're about two months behind. Now let's see what the actual hours show as a second way of checking to see where we're at on the project. So we're going to pop into the den here and uh, take a look at those uh, calculation sheets of our hours and our yearly totals and all that good stuff. So here we are taking a look at our schedule for the entire build project through 23, 24, and 25. But we're taking a look at 2023, uh, the first column here. And as you can see, in, we started in April, and that was only a partial month, so we had 291 hours. And then in May, June, July, we got up into the 400s, uh, dipped a little bit in August and September into the 300s, and that's probably because we just had less people helping, and it was really hot, so they didn't want to come and work. Uh, and then October got a little cooler, and so we got a lot of people in helping again, and we got up to 452. And then in November and December, we dropped significantly. In November down to a little below 300, and in December nearly down to 200 hours, and that's simply because of weather and losing time to rain. So that's where we uh, stand. So now let's take a look at the grand totals for this. You can see that we are shooting for a goal of 10,000 hours, and we are down to only around 9,000 hours. So that puts us behind in the number of hours that we have put in if we project it out over the entire three years. Now, of course, if we um, make up more hours in the next uh, year or so, we can uh, change that number. But right now, if it continued like that, then we would have to put in 115 hours, which is two years, two months, and one week. And that gets us up to that nearly 10,000 hours again there that you can see. And so that's really telling us that if we continue at this pace, we're behind by two months and one week. So as you can see, the estimates that I did of where we're actually at on the boat project that put us about two months behind in my estimation are almost exactly the same as calculating out the number of hours that we've spent and how far that puts us behind, which is about the same two months. So. They both equal each other, so I'm fairly confident that that's about where we're at. <laughs> so we've got a little uh, bit of uh, work to catch up, and uh, we'll get hard to work at that and get that done. So uh, if you're one of our patrons at uh, special level or above, don't forget that uh, to go ahead and go to the website and check out the new exclusive patron video. And speaking of all of our patrons, regardless of what level you're at, we thank you so much for your continued support of the SV Links project. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Right. So we'll see you next week and we'll get more work done progressing that boat. And uh, thank you all for watching. See you soon. <laughs> Bye.